The latest on that devastating underground volcanic eruption off the coast of Tonga over the weekend. The government is giving its first official update, saying three people are confirmed dead and there are multiple injuries as well. And as we look at these images, I mean, before and after here, you see side by side. The massive eruption has caused significant damage along the western coast of Tonga's main island, and three smaller islands are now being evacuated because water supplies are being affected by all that ash. We're getting images as well from Australian and New Zealand reconnaissance flights. And let's get the latest there from Stephanie Skanderis in Melbourne. These surveillance flights have come from Australia and New Zealand, and they're really showing the extent of the damage on the ground from that huge undersea volcanic eruption. What you can see in the images are the port, buildings, roads, completely covered in ash. Buildings and houses are destroyed, they're missing, and we're actually just getting a breaking alert from the Tongan government. They're saying that all the houses are destroyed on one of the islands, on Mango Island, that on another island, only two houses remain, and that on a third island, there is extensive damage. So we're seeing some of that in these surveillance flight images from Australia and New Zealand. Now, Tonga's government is telling people to stay indoors to avoid breathing in this ash. And there are fears the ash could contaminate food and supplies, but it's going to be very difficult to get aid there because what these images also show is the airport runway is completely covered in ash, making it impossible for planes to land at the moment. Now, part of the reason these surveillance flights are so necessary is because the main undersea connection cable has been cut, and that is making it nearly impossible to get a hold of people who are there. Now, naturally, that is making people who are part of the Tongan communities in countries like Australia, they are frantically trying to get a hold of their family members. Here is how one Tongan Australian described what she's going through. The worst fear is always that you're not going to see the people that you love again. Um, yeah, that's the worst fear. The worst fear is um, the suffering of other people. That's hard to cope with, probably even more than your own suffering. Now, sadly, we are hearing now that three people have died. Only one has been identified so far. She is a 50-year-old British national named Angela Glover, Heather. A lot of attention in the British press as they were waiting to find her whereabouts. What a sorry story that one is as well. And so many, obviously, Stephanie, were starting to learn them. What is the world doing? What are other countries doing to respond and agencies to help? Well, Australia and New Zealand have both pledged to help. But of course, as we said, it is difficult for flights to land until that runway is clear. So Australia is sending a Navy ship. It is the HMAS Adelaide. It is loaded with medical and engineering supplies and helicopters for distribution. But it will take five days for it to get to Tonga from Brisbane. The Australian Red Cross, it has also sent equipment, things like water containers, mosquito nets, shelter kits, things like that. New Zealand is also sending two Navy ships and it's pledged a million dollars in aid. Now, another concern is doing all of this in a COVID safe way, but the countries in this part of the world have pledged to help Tonga help get it back on its feet, Heather. Stephanie Skanderis in Melbourne.